Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. All right, I had a uh, message last night. I didn't get, hear it till this morning. Uh, so, but uh, Jenny uh, Dixon, she her son is uh, went in the hospital with this coronavirus at Blunt Memorial. I remember him. His name's Mike. So I told her we'd pray for him. I prayed for him this morning with her. She's not getting around very good. She said so. Hold her up in prayer too. Uh, you may have somebody on your mind or somebody in your family that uh, needs prayer for healing or whatever, salvation. Uh, we want to pray for that too as we open today. Uh, Edith's brother is uh, being tested for coronavirus, so we're praying that his test comes back negative. Uh, you have to be careful with all this stuff uh, coronavirus-wise. It it's really uh it's really killing people so you you know we don't want to discredit it because you just have to take precautions here and there uh, use your head instead of just for a hat rack okay so anyway uh, want to remember those things uh, pray for everybody that's here and everybody that's not here whatever the reason is. Uh, this week is our camp out also uh, starting Friday uh, at Mountain Lake Ranch up here in Dandridge. Uh, the the bullet the uh, flyer for that and the address is here on this uh, on the remembrance table. <clears throat> so if you know anybody that want might want to go, it, it, there is if you get a room in the blue building, they're they're asking a. A donation of fifty dollars for a room and there's two two regular sized beds I reckon if you stay in the if you stay in the uh, gymnasium it's a uh, you know it's uh there's two there's four rooms in it and they've got bunk beds in them so there you know it's no no donation required there but uh, uh, you know if you want to help the the uh, campground and everything they're they're uh, Offering their facility for us to use, and uh, Donnie Pullman's ministry is pretty much making it free, except for the the itinerary with the uh, with the blue building, because it's uh, you know it has to be cleaned up and everything picked up and whatever labor they have to do, they're worthy of their hire. So, it costs money to operate. Go ahead, William. David Mayhem. Okay. David Mayhem's in the hospital and uh, we need to pray for him. Raymond. Okay. I'm having to repeat what you're saying because you ain't got a microphone. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Jimmy. Okay. Where's Beulah? Beulah's birthday is Tuesday. Let's do a happy birthday to Beulah. Hey, Beulah. 39. Beulah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, you don't have to tell them, but they want to know how old you be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go. Okay. Happy birthday Day to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you and many more. Amen. Happy birthday, Beulah. Her birthday's Tuesday. And there's all her. How old is she? <laughs> old enough. That's what she says. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ain't scared of nothing, I bet. <laughs> the kids could be dismissed for youth church, children's church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What a Savior. What a God. What a Redeemer. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can anybody say good, something good about the Lord? Amen. Call upon his name. Hallelujah. And set me free. Praise the Lord. Uh huh. Through God, all things are possible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To God, all things are possible. Mm. I have last night that uh, today, today he prays for us. Yes, today he prays for us. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Pat said today he's praying for us. He prayed for us 2,000 years ago in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed for us today. His prayers, you know, are there with him all the time. You know, the accuser of the brethren is Satan, and he's he's always in front of God, accusing God, accusing us to God. So we uh, we know who our enemy is, is Satan. So we have to uh, realize that uh, we're in a fight for our eternal existence. Remember, he's just a fallen angel. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Mercy and love toward us all, and God has no respect of person. We're we're part of the family of God, and He is He is the head, and we are the hands, feet, eyes, ears, <clears throat> knees, whatever feet, top, anything but the head. Jesus is the head of the church. Thank God that I'm part of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank God I've been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. Yes, One amen. of the writers of the Old Testament said He's the He's lifted me up out of the Mari clay. I know mm. I know he delivered Amen. me from sin. He established me. He reached way down and lifted this old boy up and uh, made a soldier of the Lord out of him. And God has uh, blessed me ever since. And uh, I just uh, praise him that I can be a mouthpiece to work for him. I love him with all my heart. And I store my treasures up in heaven where a mm -hmm. thief cannot break through or steal, or moth, or they canker, or rust, or anything can touch them. Thank mm -hmm. God for his, all his Praise benefits. the Lord. He blesses me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anybody else got a testimony? I thank God for this church, <clears throat> for Pastor David, yes. for allowing me to sing in the backup. Um, I know I'm not the best singer in the world, but it really does... Uh, bless me to be able to sing. Um, I waited 50 years to sing the first time. I got to sing six months. <laughs> but that's okay. God answered the prayer anyway. Amen. But uh, but I thank God. Uh, being a single person, living with my mom who's a widow, I could feel very easily feel like I was all alone. But God has put me in this church because I know I can call on people anytime. Y'all are my brothers and sisters, and Amen. it really fills my life up Amen. to have brothers and sisters in Christ when your family is slim. Yeah. And I just thank the Lord for all of y'all and just keep on keeping on and yes. and we'll make it. Amen. Anybody else? I just want to thank the Lord for saving me and for his grace and mercy and for everyone in this church and for being here and Amen. for Pastor David. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? I was reading one time in the Word of God where this man, I think it was Joshua, the man of God, that this man was, he was, he was trying to find somebody had uh, uh, committed a sin, and he didn't know uh, which person, which man done it, but all of them, they walked before him, and he told them to testify. They testified. 
said something good about God. And he asked the guilty one to come before him. And when the guilty one got there, he said, testify. This man had no testimony. And he was the guilty one. I'd just like to say that. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to get through this without crying. <laughs> Bless her, Lord. Um, God has been really good to me. I've been here three years October. And I've been through a lot since then. My children and my health. And now my dog's health. But he's he's got me through all of it. And I wouldn't have been able to make it this far without it. Amen. There's times that I think about going back to drinking and drugs, but I haven't. And Praise God. And he's the reason why I haven't. Yes, he is. And mm-hmm. he is just. He's just so good. I thank him every day for loving me. Yes. And Amen. he's just wonderful. And I, and I just want to praise God and thank him again for loving me. Amen. I mean, I pray my children were in a really bad situation. They're separated. I haven't seen them since last December. It's been almost a year. But where they're at right now, they're happy. They're well cared for. Um, my five-year-old little uh, Addie, she's done for front flips off the diving board now. Amen. I mean, you know, she's happy. They're living on a big farm. They've been up in an airplane, and, and, you know, it's, it's just, it's, mm-hmm. they're just really happy and well cared for. Amen. Liam's gained weight. And he's eating good, even though he did kill his pet chicken. <laughs> Amen. Boys will be boys. <laughs> and they've got his medicine straight now. I mean, you know, and, and he's he's doing really well. And he was in Chattanooga, you know, in residential because she couldn't live with her daddy, her stepmom, and her stepsister. I mean, it was a really bad situation. She'd been in Peninsula, turned into a cutter. 11 years old, sick man. It's just, it was just really bad. And but I see God's hand in every bit of it. You know, they took him out of the house with the mother because of drugs and and stuff that was going on that I didn't know about at the time. Now that I know, I should have I should have known. You know, I feel like I should have known, but I did, and I, I wasn't paying attention and close enough attention, mm-hmm. and. But, uh, you know, I, I didn't have my head in the sand. I had it in the, I had it in the Word. Amen. Praise and the Lord. I just mm-hmm. want to thank God. And I see his hand <coughs> in all of it. And yeah. I know if it wasn't for him, I'd be dead by now. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. And I just want to thank him. And, and I just, that's it. I just, I just love mm-hmm. it, and you know, I thank God for Kathy, <coughs> because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. And this is my home, and I felt at home the first day I came to this church. And I've been praying for God to, to show me that place that teaches from the Bible, that teaches from His Word, because a lot of churches. You can go through a whole sermon and not one scripture be told. And I've been to them, you know, and I don't want that. I want, I want to know what God wants to, me to do. I want to know what God teaches, you know, what God wants. Because I want to go to heaven. Amen. And I want to be victorious at the end of it. Amen. And, you know, I have my moments, and <coughs> I got a temper. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> And it's getting better, but sometimes it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all deal with tempers. I've uh, had to deal with mine over the years, too. Yeah, lately lately, um, a few bad words slipped out, and I feel guilty over that. But, you know, I'm, 
apologize, God. Amen. <laughs> 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 you know, um, and I thank God for Freddie because he's working my son and Lola, and, and he's worked him to have these slept out days. <laughs> oh, that's good. Amen. Freddie needs some good help. <coughs> Bless him. <coughs> that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Where <laughs> was God when Jesus? was on the cross. I just want to say I'm, I'm glad I come to the Lord. Of course, a few people in here know me. <clears throat> Three years ago, I had cancer. And the Lord come to me. And I'm so glad he did. Amen. I'm just like sister back here. I probably wouldn't have been here. I just want to thank him for everything he's done for me. Amen. <coughs> for sticking beside me mm -hmm. the church everybody praying for me people praying for me I didn't even know <laughs> but I know them now amen, amen. thank you where where brother David where? I'd like to thank the Lord mm -hmm. I had a bad spell with my heart and oh, the doctor yeah. thought it might stop Mm -hmm. And thank God he healed it. I went to pray and I had any more trouble with Amen. it. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Where was God when Jesus was on the cross? Where was God when the doubts rose up in your mind? I don't normally double testify, but I was sitting here thinking 18 years ago, um, I, uh, choices that I made literally tore my family apart. And I had my kids taken away from me, and I just couldn't understand. And the Lord reminded me that I gave, you dedicated those children to me to protect them. And sometimes I have to protect them from you. But he never left me or, forsa or forsaken me. You know, he was always there. And I, I remember one time I was, I was drinking real bad. I never was a big drinker, but I was drinking this time because I needed to numb the pain and all that, of the, of the choices that I made. It was my choices that I made that put me in that situation. And I heard God say real clear, just keep your eyes on me. And I don't know who, who needs to hear this. It just kept burning over my, in my heart. You know, he just said, keep your eyes on me. And I, and I got back right with him, and I got custody back of 50% uh, custody with my kids. And in the last four years um, have been such a blessing to me, getting closer to God. I had to die to self to get there, but um, it's, been a, it's been a really good ride. <laughs> It's been really great. This is what I wanted my whole life and, and couldn't get my, beside myself to do it, and I finally did, and, and I thank God for it. Anybody else? Okay, my name is Amy Tim, and I had tent one too. I know I do wrong. Well, I know I do wrong, you guys. I'm not me home my mom. And I call her all the time, come home. I get beat up a long time. I don't go, I get beat up a long time. And I not call my mom no more. My God tell no, me, E, you need to go home to your mom. Mm -hmm. And devil day, you not need to go home to your mom. You need to stay here. 
and that and he took my toe, caught one in hell. I'm tell a bit guy, you know. I tell I tell old guy, you know. I tell old guy hug me. I tell go back, you know. And they caught one of my hell. Um, my hell. My mom go get my toe. My mom go get my toe. And the boy take me Nackville, Nackville. They, I not see my mom no more. They, you not see your mom no more. <coughs> and God, they e, you need go back home. Your mom, your mom home when you come home. I love my cat. I love my, I live in Memphis a long time, you guys. I love my, I love my pet where I live, the hen. And God tell you, you need to home back your mom. And I love, I love my cat. Oh, you got a little oil. I love my how. I love my pop the hen. He tell me move out. He tell me not to see my mom no more. I get, I had two bad guys one time. My boy said, what happened for you, Ted? I said, I fall, brother, you know, that I fall. He said, you lie, Ted, you're not fall. I know what you had two bad guys. I tell, I, I tell him lie. I tell my mom that lie again. I'm fall. My brother, you had two bad guys, Ted. Who hit you, on that? I don't want to tell you who hit me. And I happy I'm go home, my mom. I'm not call her all time. I go home. I in bathroom, Nick in bathroom. He the what you do, E? And I in bathroom talk to my mom. And God tell me you need to go back home, your mom. And the one that you not go back home, your mom. The one that you go wanna tell her. That her tell me you not get away right in. That you go wanna tell her. And I that. God, I won't go back home, my mom. Amen. In the end, thank Amen. you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Turn to Revelation chapter three. Father, we thank you for an opportunity to stand. Lord, I pray that your spirit move through us all here today, mostly me that I'd be able to convey this message to your children. I pray for each, each and every person that's here today. I ask you to open up our hearts, minds, and eyes to see where you're at today. Where you're at today, Lord, is where we need to see. We need to see where you're at right now. We need to see where you're at right now. We need to know you in the power of your resurrection. Resurrection creator, sovereign, almighty, all-knowing, all-wise, making intercession for us right now. Right now, we need you. We need you, Lord, because we're walking into the book of Revelations, and I pray that we walk into the book of Revelations with our eyes open our minds open, our hearts open, 
that we might receive strength from your almighty presence. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said amen. amen. <clears throat> I've been praying and seeking the Lord all week from the position of having, I've been praying and seeking the Lord all week from the position of just having a little strength left. I know that the church is being worn out. And I know it's our own doing. I know it's the church's own doing that, that the church is being worn out by the trials and tribulations and the mistakes that we've all walked into. We reap the harvest of the seeds that we've sown in our past. We reap the harvest because God forgives us a sin doesn't mean there's no consequences. The consequences of unbelief is, is uh, you know, is, is not salvation. The consequences of unbelief is, is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. The consequences of being worn down and not knowing where to look up to. I just asked the question, where was God when Jesus was beaten and bludgeoned and crowned with a thorn, with a crown of thorns and blood running down his face and out his hands and out his side and out his feet? Where was God? Oh, we've heard all the stories that God was in heaven looking down on on his son hanging on the cross and God had to turn his back on Jesus because and put the son out for three hours because he couldn't look on sin. Where wh What happened to God, the God that came down when Adam and Eve sinned? That's the God I'm looking for, the God that came to me when I was lost and in sin and even in sin today when I fall short of the glory of God. That's the God of all creation. That's the God who can do all things. That's the God that I serve, the God that is omnipresent. Not the God that turns his back on sin. I serve a God that turns his back. Turns, I mean, what happened to the prodigal son story? The prodigal son was in sin in the hog pen, and, and he came to himself, and he, he went to the father, and because, I mean, the father didn't say, well, I, you done had yours. Uh, did, he, did he say that? He didn't say that to the prodigal. Huh? He came back into the father's house. He gave him a ring. He gave him the cloth of sonship because there's enough, more than enough in the father. Even though he divided his, his wealth and gave it to his sons, it's more than enough. So that gives me hope. That gives me hope if I'm in the pig pen eating of the stuff that the pigs would be eating. Gives me hope. I might just have a little strength, but I can come to myself because I come to truth. Truth is that God is the creator of all things, and God holds everything together. And if I place myself in him, I'm more than secure. Huh? I'm more than secure. But I understand the day that we're in, we're in the day that we're going to walk into the book of Revelations. I want you to, to, Carol's going to read Revelations chapter 3, starting at verse 7. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, 8, and 9, Carol. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things said. And to, to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. 
You know, we got a picture. That that whole room down there in the fellowship halls, all Revelation and Rapture. It starts out as you come in the door, uh, Revelation 1, verse 12 through 19. It says that John was on the Isle of Papyrus. I'm going to give you a foundation for what it says. It says that John was given uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ. What does revelation mean? The revealing. So John was being revealed in a place of captivity on the Isle of Pappas at 85 or 90 years old. He's being revealed and it says that, that, uh, that John saw a two-edged sword coming out of Jesus' mouth in Revelation 1 verse 12 through 19. Fire death in his eyes, woolly white hair, and in his right hand he has seven stars. The seven stars represents, represents the seven angel spirits that anoints the church. Huh? The seven angel spirits that is uh, anointing the churches and he's here right now. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit's here. The angel of the Lord is here. There's an angelic host of God already here. He, the, the God of all creation is trying to cut through the unbelief that Adam and Eve birthed in the Garden of Eden. When, when the serpent told Eve, did God surely say? Huh? That's when unbelief was introduced into God's creation and it has grown and grown and grown to the place that it is today and the world is following unbelief. But you see, we're serving a God that's going to restore everything. God, God's judgments, like I said last week, God's judgments are all in the, pre, in the preference of, res, of, of reconciling. Saying, come back. Come back to the truth. Come back to the place that I nailed sin on the cross. Come back to the place that I renewed life in my own self. I want to tell you where God was. He wasn't in heaven turning his back on his son. He was in Christ Jesus hanging on the cross reconciling the world. Amen. He was in Christ Jesus right there on the cross. He never left him. He never forsook him. No matter what the world says, he is omnipresent. He is God incarnate and he was in Christ reconciling the world. And defeating Satan. Putting Satan under our feet. But did he allow unbelief to be put under our feet? No, because unbelief is a choice. Unbelief is a choice. And choices are only made. Good choices are only made on good information. Good choices are only made if you got enough information to make the choice. that not right? So here we're fighting a fight that's already been won. We're fighting a fight. You're fighting a fight that's already been won, church. What does it require? Belief in God, the creator that gave us a manual and put on an earth suit himself and called his name Emmanuel, God with us. And walk and talk just like we walk and talk. Suffer just like we suffer and worse. Because all the sins of the world, past, present, and future, was nailed on that cross in his flesh. That was the veil that separates the, the, the humanity side of, of, of us. Separates us from the spiritual side of us, the eternal. If we only have hope... In this flesh, then we lost. I don't have hope in myself. I, I know how weak I am. I know how long we've journeyed. I know how weak I was and how distraught I was before Christ. And coming into a knowledge of Christ as my Lord and Savior and being born again has given me some strength. But I know the journey's not over yet. Like Paul said. Huh? Like Paul said, to, to, to die would be gained, but to live 
would be sacrificed that someone might believe in God, Jesus Christ, through my testimony and through my walk. But I just have a little strength left. Go ahead and read, Carol. Revelation 3, verse 7. <clears throat> to the angel of your right, these things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of Wait David. A Do that and again. <clears throat> Thus saith the. These things saith he that is holy. Saith he that is holy. He that is true. Is there anybody else holy? Huh? These things are being said by Jesus Christ, God Almighty, sitting on the throne of God, making intercession for us. Listen to the accuser of the brethren and making intercession for us. And he's sending us help in times of trouble. He's sending us the strength. He's causing miracles to happen. I mean, I just watched, I was watching a, a, a video uh, just this past week of a church service going on. I mean, they was having some church. I mean, they were shouting and they were singing, and, and all of a sudden, this woman came up that her arm was up into her shoulder. I mean, it was up into her shoulder. She was like this, and and from here to elbow to the shoulder joint was crumbled up into one little section there with a big knot on it. And I watched that service. They were shouting and singing. And so every once in a while, she was in the middle of them. That she was shouting and singing too, and and she was in the middle of them. And this this person that was there praying for her, and they was praying for her, and interceding for her. And every once in a while, he he'd come up to her and he'd throw water on her shoulder, throw water on her shoulder. And they'd go to shouting and praying again for five or ten more minutes, and, and he'd go back up and throw water on her out of a bottle of water, throw it back on her shoulder. And by 15 minutes of praising and, and worshiping God, by 15 minutes, that, that knot started to get lesser. And the elbow started getting further from her shoulder. And within 15 minutes, her arm was like this. Out normal. If God can do it for them, he can do it for us. God's done it time and time again for us. I mean, God's done it time and time again for us. There's no denying that there's a God in heaven right here. A hand reach away. Jesus said the kingdom of God is a hand reach away. It's now you right now. It's now you right now. But unbelief will separate you from that. Go ahead, Carol. These things saith he that is holy. <clears throat> he that is true. He that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but to lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. And to know that I have loved thee. A little strength, but he's gonna send he's gonna send strength to know that he loves us. To if you only know God in a religious compliance, is that your relationship with God? You've dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's. You, you've got up every morning and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God. If you've lived your life like that and, and you think you've got to do that continually, that's repetition. And, and so if you think you've got to do that religiously and, and, and not live your life, go through the trials and tribulations of life and see the hand of God move in your life, to bring you through a thing, then all you have is religious compliance. Religious compliance. God invites you into another relationship. Go to John 15. John 15. Hallelujah. This, if you want to look at it, John 15 is the is the invitation to every person that's ever been born of a woman. You know, I preached a sermon a few months ago about, about abiding, abiding in him, abiding in me, uh, and, and so on. Through verse, uh, through verse uh, chapter 15, through 
from verse 4 through verse uh, 8. How many times does abide in me or I abide in you use there? Does that not mean that you have to invite him in? If you don't invite him in, then he ain't going to come in. Huh? If you don't invite him in, then, then whenever it's all said and done, when, whenever judgment comes and you've, you've surrendered the, the flesh to the ground where it came from, if when that comes and you've not came to him that he might give you a name, that he might name you as a son or a daughter of God Almighty, he will say to you, Go to Matthew 25 and, and read 31 through 46. It says, he'll say to you, depart from me, I never knew you. Because you've got to invite him in that he will rename you or name you himself that he'll know you. Do you see that? Where is God now? Where was God when Jesus Christ was paying the sin debt for this old sinner man? He was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world. Now he's come in me reconciling me unto the Father that I might have an eternal crown of glory and have a soul winner's crown and have the crowns that God laid up for me as a faithful servant, not a perfect servant, a faithful servant. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Let's start reading the verse 1 of chapter 15. Also. I may interrupt you quite a few times, but John 15 is very important. It's an important thing for you to get and rehearse because it's Jesus telling you that you're invited into him and him into you. Come on now. I want to ask you something. How many of you think you have all knowledge? How many of you think you have all knowledge that you can sit and, and on, on a pedestal and think, well, I know this and I know this and I know that and there's all there is to know? Huh? I kid my grandkids like that. I said, kids know everything. They said, no, Papa, we don't know everything. I said, well, why you act like that? Huh? But out of all the knowledge in the world, all the creation in the universe and the cosmos and everything, that's knowledge. God has all that knowledge. How much of that knowledge you think I have? I don't have, but maybe even, I, I doubt if I tip the scale at maybe a half of a percent. Huh? I doubt if I'd tip the scale at any amount of time, any amount of knowledge other than how to get up in the morning and put my britches on. Some of you need to learn that knowledge. <laughs> Keep your britches on. Huh? Come on now, that's the truth. Huh? Praise the Lord. Amen. You get that one, you might get the next one. Huh? So praise God. He has all knowledge. And God exists as in all knowledge. So if you miss him, if you miss him, you, only, you miss him in the little bit of knowledge you have. But if you look at the evidence, if you look at the evidence of his word and history and the fact and look into what God's done through the church, age after age, look what he done through Moses, look what he done through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look what he done from the descendants of Noah. Look before the flood, how the ten major names were handed down, the word of God and the truth of God to, to Noah. Noah's name means rest. So God gave Noah rest and brought him above the, above the earth in an ark. That he and, and he and his family would survive. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. And then God succeeded the water and the ark landed on Mount Arad, which means reverse the curse. Huh? In the ark 
is the hope of the curse being reversed. Christ Jesus was that ark that rose above the water. Christ Jesus is that ark that Noah, that uh, that ate, that Moses had erected and placed in the Holy of Holies, in the tabernacle in the wilderness, in the Holy of Holies. They built a, a box with represented cherubims, touched the, the wings, touched the top over the purple cushion, mercy seat that Christ is on. God is on the mercy seat. And God's attitude toward mankind is mercy. But we only have a little strength. We only have a little strength. Because we're at the last day. Because of sin, God has pulled his hand back in judgment that some might be saved through the tribulation that's coming upon the earth. It's a global pandemic. It's a global government. It's a global currency that's coming that the Antichrist is going to rule and reign upon this earth and he's going to make it almost impossible for anybody that's still alive and misses the, 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 uh, the refuge in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are in the, uh, under the wing of the Almighty and he'll protect you just like he's going to do the Jews in the, in the tribulation when they flee to the mountain. And he'll protect them for 1,260 days or something like that. And Daniel, he'll protect you. But you cannot take the mark of the beast. And he'll have the power to, to if you don't take the mark of the beast, you won't be able to buy or sell. You won't be able to feed these little beautiful kids that are running around here. You won't be able to feed them. You won't be able to uh, meet their needs because there won't be no medical facility you can go to unless you test pot, unless you test out that you've done took the mark. Who are you going to rely on then for your uh, uh, flus and pneumonias and broken bones and everything? Who are you going to rely on then when, when your kids fall down and skin their knees and need stitches? Who are you going to rely on then because you ain't going to be able to take them to them? They'll take them away from you. I mean, they practiced it in Colorado about five years ago. They practiced it. FEMA practiced it in real life about five years ago. I was listening to Dave Hodges and, and Paul Preston, and they was talking about, I believe it's Paul Preston, but they was talking about the, the FEMA people were, were doing a live test of the end time. They, they brought school buses up to roadblocks and people would come up to the roadblocks and when they stopped them they would uh, test them to see if they were compliant with whatever their rules was and if they weren't compliant they offered them to be compliant right there on the spot if they refused to be compliant and they had kids in the car women in the car they sent the women and kids to one bus and the men to another bus and separate them just like they did in times past. I'm telling you. This is what you think perilous times are here now? You better get your socks on. Your boots on. You better leather strap your girdle around you. You better be prepared. To do whatever it takes. To, to make it to heaven. Easy grace. Easy grace. Is going to be gone. It's going to be a past thing for seven years. It's going to start out easy. Because there's going to be a. There's going to be a person come upon the earth that when the world is at war like it's fixing to be, when the world's at war like it's fixing to be, there's going to be one individual step out on the, on the, on the stage of, of the world, global world, and he's going to say, all right, that's enough, peace. But you want, I want to tell you, it's not Christ. It's not God Almighty. It's the Antichrist. Huh? Don't believe a lie and be damned. Don't believe a lie and be damned like Eve was. Don't believe a lie like Eve did, did God surely say. And then when, when Eve questioned in her own self, did God surely say, he said that your eyes will be open and you'll be as God. You see, that was a lie because Adam and Eve were already like God. 
They had a presence of God that whenever God came down into the cool of the day into the Garden of Eden and walked with Adam and Eve, they communicated with him one-on-one. When you are born and abide in Christ, you can communicate with the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, and the angelic host, the spiritual realm, one-on-one. You want to know why most people don't believe that, that they're communicating with, the, with God? We're, we're God created in his own image. He's an individual God for every person. And when we hear God speak to us in our own voice, we think that can't be God. If you studied and read the Word of God, you are, you're going to be communicated with in a familiar voice. Huh? It's God. The Bible says, Paul says, test the spirits. Huh? Test the spirits with the Word of God and by prayer. If you don't know the Word of God, you ain't going to test nothing. You're going to believe any, anything coming down the pike. Huh? You better, you better start pursuing it because... David, David, and all his mess and all his failure, God told him, said, if you'll pursue me with all your heart, that's the key. If you pursue me with all your heart, you'll find me, and I'll find you. And I'll name you. And I'll name you. You know what he's going to name me? He's going to name me mine. He's going to see me come up before him, and he'll say, That's mine. That is mine. This one's mine. Huh? Come on now. Hallelujah. You only got a little strength and we got a little time to go. I'm going to hold on to Jesus, the blessed hope that's in Christ Jesus that's given to me freely. What? I mean, I couldn't purchase it. There's no labor I could do to gain it. There's no wealth in the world that anybody can have to purchase it at all. It's a free gift made possible by God Almighty through Jesus Christ, His Son. Go on and read, Carol. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm about to go pray somewhere. I am I'm going to go over here and pray for you. I am Praise the, the Lord. Vine. Hallelujah. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it. Purges it. He purges it. <laughs> that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you accept you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Go back and read verse 1 again. Everybody might have missed that he's the vine. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Now go back to the verse you was reading. For I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me he can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. And is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even Lord, I was praying, and the Lord said, cast off the spirit of pride. Cast off the spirit of pride. You can't do it. You can't do it of yourself. 
cast off the spirit of pride. Only Jesus can do it. Go ahead. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatever whatsoever I command you. That's just the, that's just the initial things to get in. Marriage is the plan of God to marry a thing. Satan is trying to marry into the world system and offer a world answer to a, uh, 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 to a situation that can't be answered except by God. Marriage is joining something to something else. Marriage is joining something into something else. Just like me and Judy got married 34 years ago. She joined into something else, and I joined into something else, and we became one. That's being one in mind, one in, in, in circumstance that, that two can produce another. If you don't marry into the plan of God... You don't have a husband. If you don't marry into it and join into what his, what his word says and obey his commands and be faithful to him, if you don't learn that being faithful, that's what's kept me going all these years. I understood when Christ saved my soul and gave me forgiveness for my sin and set me on a new path, I understood that if I couldn't be faithful to him, if I wouldn't be faithful to him in every decision I made, everything that I'd done, if I wasn't able to do that, then I would lose the relationship. Just like if I wasn't faithful to her, I'd have to be faithful to him to be faithful to Judy. And if I wasn't faithful to him, then there's no way I could be faithful to Judy for 34 years because time wears on, on people. And we only have a little strength. Our strength is in the hope that our, that, that our love is going to produce love. Not children, produce love. If our, if our relationship and marriage doesn't produce love, then, then we'll be angry people. We'll be mad people. Judy would have black eyes like Edith did. And she, I would have a bullet in my head. Huh? Come on, don't it make sense? Huh? Go on and read. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord does. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. You, are not chose, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen he, you. He made it easier by coming in the flesh. It's more a bite-sized bite when you have, an, have a visual uh, a, a visual. Uh, witness that 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 he did it in the flesh, and we know the scripture says he was tempted in all manner of sin, just as we're tempted. Go to John one. I got to close. I looked at the time. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be done by two thirty, every time, and I've done already. Done already past that. John one. I'll give again? you the ones to read. John 1. Let me find it. John 1, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, and 10. Okay. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And Wait the, a minute. Jesus was 2,000 years ago, wasn't he? Why beginning? is John going back to the beginning? He was in the beginning. What? But he was a man 2,000 years ago. But what did it say in verse 1 again? In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word, the word was, was God. with God. And the Word was God. And the Word is God. So where was the word when Jesus was hanging on the cross? Huh? Where was the word when, when Jesus was on the cross? <clears throat> he was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world unto himself. Without that, you... Without that, you are absent of identity. Without coming to Christ, that He be that you uh, be birthed of God, you're without identity. That's why when when the judgment comes, and if you don't have an identity of that one's mine, you'll be with Satan for eternity. How you like them apples? Huh? Come on, you want to stand, spend eternity with the, with the one that caused the world destruction? Identity. Put this away. Put it this way. Jesus will say to you, say, you did not come to me. To, to name you. You did not come to me to name you. Look at the cross. Where was where was God? G he was inside the beaten, bloody body of Jesus, reconciling the, the world, the believing world to himself. That's what I that's the one point I want to make. He only hung on the cross to reconcile the believing world. He only came for a believing world. And if you believe his word, then you become faithful to him. Because the consequences ain't worth it, church. I'll say it again. Eternity's too long. Come on. Eternity's too long. Come on, nobody, did nobody remember? Eternity is too long to be wrong. What are you going to do with it? Eternity is too long to be wrong. Could you be wrong? It's your choice. Unbelief or pursue God with all your heart. That's the only way you're going to find truth. That's the only way you're going to find it because Jesus, after he saw that he wasn't received, he started talking in parables. Huh? Come on. Jesus, the word of God, started talking in parables. That only the believing world, that hear the spiritual voices of God in, in, the, in the eternity right now that we're in now because there's a parallel to the, to the kingdom of God, which is the earth. But the parallel to the kingdom of God at the end of the millennial reign will be burned up. At the end of the millennial reign. The chips will fall where they were. Believing world. If identity comes, if identity comes to you be like Adam hearing God in the garden, you'll be like Adam hearing God in the garden. And remember, 
He comes to you in a familiar voice. Most of the time it sounds like you talking to you. But how you know it's you, how you know it's him, how you know it's him, test the spirit. Does it line up with the word of God? Mm -hmm. Is it teaching you strength that you can have a, a little more strength? Because strength, I mean, people do permanent things in temporary circumstances. People do permanent things in temporary circumstances. Mm. The promise, the promises of God are con conditional, but the love of God is unconditional. You hear me? The promises of God are conditional. He ain't Santa Claus. Nope. He don't have to prove himself to you or me. If he didn't want to be revealed, he wouldn't have been revealed and we wouldn't have had no hope from the beginning. Hallelujah. Amen. What does that do? What does that do? The saying, God can look, can't look on sin. We know God can look on sin. He looked on me and saved my soul. God don't look for perfect people. He looks for obedient people. God don't look for perfect people. He looks for obedient people. Will you be obedient and pursue him? He's not hard to find. He's really not hard to find. But if, you, if you're looking for him in unbelief, he'll be a parable to you. If you're looking for him in unbelief, he'll be a parable to you. Look at the prodigal son. He, he was willing to just be a servant. You know, when you understand where God found you, you're willing to just be a servant if he'll forgive you. You're willing to be a servant, but look how the father treated the prodigal son. He'll treat you the same way because he's no respect for a person. But look what the father did. John 1 is where we we're at right now. I need to catch up and we're going to close with this. Jesus the Word. Jesus the Word came to reveal God the Father and tell us they are one. That's important. Jesus the Word came to reveal God. Now if you're looking for another way to reveal God to you than Jesus, it's impossible. You understand that? You can't line enough ducks up to make your plan fit together to prove there's a God or not. You hear me? You can't line enough ducks up to prove there's a God or not. Jesus, the Word, came to reveal God the Father and tell us they are one. That was his purpose. Don't. I couldn't spell the word, so I just abbreviate it. Now I don't remember what I abbreviate, but it says don't something religious duty don't experience religious duty father was lesser by giving more to the prodigal hmm. that didn't make sense to me maybe it made sense to you <laughs> don't expect the father not to receive you even if you were a prodigal. Even if you weren't a prodigal. 
and you've just lived your life up to now in unbelief. He's still got open arms. We preach. Listen to me. Hold it, Jimmy. Hold it, Jimmy. We preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Gospel means good news. We preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to, re to reveal God the Father through Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. And we bring the, bring the gospels of Jesus Christ into the, into the knowledge of people that by the anointed preaching of God, that the yokes that separate you from uh, 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 the, the God of all creation is available to everyone that will say, I'm not going to let my pride separate me from my God anymore. Pride was why Satan fell. And if you want to have the attribute of Satan, you can stay in your prideful self because eternity is too long to be wrong. Let's all stand. Here I've went 20 minutes over, over time. And the unbelief is what makes so many of us fall. It's mm -hmm. when we start doubting that God is good all the time. What, what makes us fall, what makes us fall is we look at our own strength and not God's strength. That's what makes us fall is when we start looking at ourselves instead of God. That's what makes us fall. That's what causes unbelief. Is us looking at herself. I'm telling you, don't wait till till it's too late, because it's going to be too late. Read Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one through twelve. It says in the latter part of that those verses of scripture that he will turn those that love not the truth. He will turn them into uh, go read look up uh, first second Thessalonians chapter two. Second Thessalonians chapter two. I want you to hear what what's gonna happen to the unbelieving world. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse probably eight through twelve. You know, I want to know the Word of God. Because in the Word of God, Jesus said, you, you know the Word of God, because that the Word of God reveals Christ, Jesus, to the lost world. So knowing the Word of God, knowing the Word of God, the Word of God is the witness. The Word of God is the witness. God the Father is the reality. And he wants to walk with you in the cool of the day. He wants to share his glory with you. I mean, look at a lot, look at Enoch. That's before the flood. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, walked with God from the age of 65 to the age of 365. And he pleased God. And, and the, the witness is that God took him to heaven with him. Got it, Carol? Yeah, I got it. And then shall that wicked be revealed to whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth <clears throat> and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and living wonders and with all deceivableness, deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe delusions. a lie. Strong delusions. This is that all might be damned. That all might be damned. 
the ones that are turned over to strong delusions will be damned. With every head bowed, no one looking around. I want to ask you this question. Do you believe you heard the word of God today? Do you believe you heard the word of God today? Yes. Do you believe the word of God can set you free? Yes. Do you believe the work of Jesus Christ can reconcile you to the Father? Yes. Then what hinders you? What hinders you? What keeps you from obedience? Because that's what God's looking for, obedient children. He's not looking for perfect people. He's looking for obedient people. So what hinders you from being obedient to the Word of God? It says confess Him with your mouth. Believe, believe on Him and confess Him with your mouth and you shall be saved. Father, we just thank you for an opportunity, an opportunity to share your word with this house. Revelation chapter 3 to the church of Philadelphia. The Philadelphia church is the only one that you didn't reprimand. And in, according to the Bible study of Revelation chapter 3, the church of, the church of uh, Philadelphia is called the Rapture Ready Church. Lord, I ask you that that we be a, a rapture-ready church after the pattern of the book of Revelations and the, ex, and the explanation of the church of Philadelphia. Lord, we don't want to be in the pattern of the Laodicean church because that church walked in lukewarmness. Lord, don't let us be lukewarm because your word says that you'll spew us out of your mouth. Lord, let us walk in the newness of life. Let us walk in the love of the marriage <clears throat> we marry into your plan that we might reproduce love like you love in jesus name amen, amen. praise the lord yes. go ahead jimmy <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry.